Hello class, let me share with you a discussion on this topic, ano, yung events after the reporting period. And I think it is good that we will be able to appreciate what is the difference between the two types of events after the reporting period. But first of all, let us explain, let us define what is the meaning of the events after the reporting period. Now, according to IAS-1 or IAS-1 or PAS-1, kung Philippine ano, accounting standards ang pinag-uusapan natin, although sabi ko nga, these are simply international adoptions, kaya IAS-1, PAS-1, parehas lang po yan. Sinasabi po kasi doon na yung events after the reporting period are those events, okay, regardless kung favorable ba yan or unfavorable yan sa part ng company, that occur between the end of the reporting period and the date on which the financial statements are authorized for issue. Now, ano bang tinutukoy natin dito na end of the reporting period? O, ang, ang tinutukoy lamang po natin dito, kung halimbawa, by the end of the year, calendar year reporting si company, ano, we are referring to transactions or events after December 31. January 1 onwards because that is the end of your reporting period. If you are following a fiscal period, fiscal year, so kung kailan nagtatapos ang fiscal year mo, kunwari nagtatapos ito ng June 30, etong mga events after the reporting period are events that happen after June 30, July 1 onwards. But before ano, and the date on which the financial statements are authorized for issue. So it is the date between the end of the reporting period at saka yung date when the financial statements are authorized for issue by the board of directors or by the BOD. Okay? Okay? Okay. <laughs> so I hope malinaw po yan. Ano? Oh, when the date or when the financial statements are authorized for issue. Yun po yung ating end. No? So yung period na yan in between kapag may mga nangyari dyan, those are events after the reporting period. Kinakailangan kasi natin na malaman kung yung mga events na yan ay may impact sa ating reports, no? sa ating mga financial statement balances. Kasi baka kinakailangan ng adjustment yan sa ating mga balances or kaya naman simple disclosures lang. So that is why we have to identify events after the reporting period even though yung period end or yung year end mo ay nagtapos na. Pero kasi maaring may impact po ito. Now, these are also known as subsequent events. O subsequent events, events na nangyari right after. And it may require either an adjustment to the balances or simply disclosures. Pag disclosure, inanarate lang natin ito. Ano yung mga nangyari na yon after the reporting period? Now, meron po tayong dalawa ha. At yun na rin mismo yun, ano? yung which will affect, this, uh, which will... Ano no? Require adjustments or simple disclosures. Kasi etong una, yung adjusting events after the reporting period, it, re it will require adjustments. Kaya nga adjusting events. Samantalang pag non-adjusting events, it is ano lang, no? disclosures lamang po. Wala tayong babaguhin doon sa mga balanse. Meron lang tayong ilalagay sa notes to the financial statements. Okay? Now, ano yung mga examples ng adjusting events after the reporting period? O isa-isahin natin, ano, ito yung mga naka-identify talaga. Una, the settlement after the reporting period. O settlement, no, of a court case. So, nagkaroon ng mga kasuhan before, no, aware naman na tayo dyan. Pero, after the reporting period, may settlement. Ano yung settlement? Uh, ito yung halibawa, may mga kasuhan. Tapos, um, ano no, kinasuhan yung company. And then, nag-settle. Ibig sabihin, nag nagbayad tayo ng mga Daniels Perwiso. Okay? That confirms that the entity had a present obligation at the reporting date. So, during the reporting period, okay, o, kasi, that confirms that the entity had a present obligation at the reporting date. So, meron ng present obligation at the reporting date. So, merong mga settlements. So, there are adjusting items that may mga ano na po, ano, kinakailangang i-adjust dito. So, adjusting events at the, ano to, no? Ano ba yan? Na, nabubulol na tuloy ako. So, ito ay isang example ng adjusting events after the reporting period. 
Okay? Kinakailangan natin i-adjust yung mga balanse. Pangalawa, the receipt of information after the reporting period indicating that an asset was impaired at the reporting date. Nagkaroon tayo ng information after the reporting period na may mga asset tayo na impaired na pala siya at the reporting date. Medyo late lang yung information. So kinakailangan nating i-adjust yung affected na asset yon. Na yun, ano for impairment para ma-consider natin ano ba talaga yung mga balance nito after impairing it, no? Kasi meron siyang impairment losses. Pangatlo, the determination after the reporting period of the cost of assets purchased or the proceeds from assets sold during the reporting period. So, during the reporting period, no? Oh, and when I am talking about during the reporting period, yung pasok doon sa ating taon. Hindi yung events after, ha? Pag during the reporting period, kung ang pinag-uusapan natin ay calendar year 2021. So, from January hanggang December. Okay? Yung events after the reporting period, 2022 na. January 1 onwards. Hanggang doon sa time na na-authorize na ng BOD yung FS. So, na-determine okay, yung cost ng asset na binili o kaya naman na-determine yung proceeds ng asset after the reporting period. Pero, it will have to be affected in our balances during the reporting period because the transaction really happened on the reporting period. It just so happened na yung balances, the determination was made after pa ng reporting period. So, kinakailangan natin ang adjustments dito. So, this is an adjusting event. Okay? What else? I'll continue. Pang-apat, no? The determination after the reporting date of the amount of profit sharing or bonus payments. If the entity had a present legal obligation or constructive obligation to make such payments as a result of events before the end of the reporting period. So, na-determine natin yung mga amounts ng profit sharing or mga bonus payments sa mga compensation, ano, may mga schemes dito for profit sharing or mga bonuses. So, the, determi the determination, yung balance na identify natin kung magkano yung profit share or yung bonus payments after the reporting period. Pero during the reporting period, no, meron na talagang present legal obligation or constructive obligation na magbayad. Okay? So it will it will require an adjusting event. It will require an adjust an adjustments to the balances. And last, no, the discovery of fraud or errors which show that the financial statements are incorrect during the reporting period. Eto yung aking mga balance. Pero after the reporting period after December 31, and before the state the FS was authorized for ano no issue na identify ko may na discover ako ng mga fraud or errors so kinakailangan nating i-reflect yon sa ating FS kasi mali pa la yon so we, it will require adjustments okay so those are examples ha now how about examples of non-adjusting events na hindi kinakailangan i-adjust kaya nga non-adjusting eh. pero it will require a disclosure it has to be noted in our notes to the financial statements Eto, una, major business combination or disposing of a major subsidiary. Wala naman po itong e effect no, sa ating mga balances. Pero these are important transactions that has to be disclosed. Okay? Nagkaroon ng business combination, nakipag-merge yung company with another company. Or merong dinispose na subsidiary. Okay? Marami itong mga, kunwa, ano no, malaking company ito. Tapos may mga investments in subsidiary siya. Merong isang dinispatch siya na. Okay, after the reporting period. Oh, disclosure lang ang kinakailangan dito. Pangalawa, announcing a plan to discontinue operation, disposing of assets, or settling liabilities attributable to a discontinuing operation or entering into a binding agreement to sell such assets or settle such liabilities. So merong mga plano na itigil ang isang operation, I-dispose yung isang asset or magbayad ng mga liabilities attributable sa isang discontinued operation or mag-enter into a contract ano, or agreement na magbenta ng asset or magbayad or isettle yung mga liabilities. O wala po itong financial effect. 
walang mga wala tayong babaguhin dito sa mga balance at the reporting period pero it has to be disclosed kasi these are plans no uh, initiatives kung hindi man ano no kung tama man nagamitin ko yung term na initiative pero ito ay mga gagawin nilang mga hakbang after the reporting period pero hindi pa naman hindi naman ito maaapektuhan yung mga balance natin during the reporting period pangatlo major purchases and disposal of assets or expropriation of major assets by government eto mga transactions na ito nangyari after the reporting period okay for the next period na po ito pero hindi po nito tatamaan dapat yung mga balance during the reporting period because the transactions happened okay kinakailangan pa rin itong i-disclose sa ating notes to the financial statements that after ano kunwari on January 15 2022 mayroong mga major purchases na nangyari or may dinispatch na ng, ng, ng mga assets, of course, we will have to consider when the transactions really happen. So it happened after the reporting period. It doesn't need yung mga balance natin as of 2021, for example, hindi naman kinakailangan na i-adjust ito kasi hindi naman yung transactions relating to 2021. Sa 2022 pa yun, mangyayari. Pero kinakailangan lang, kinakailangan lang natin i-disclose. Okay? What else? Ito pa, no? Destruction of a major production plant by a fire. Nagkasunog. Of course, oh, sabihin na natin na may mga inventory losses tayo dito. Pero syempre, ang effect na nito is 2022. Gamitin ko lang yung example, ha, 2021 and 2022. Para hindi tayo pa ulit-ulit na events after the reporting period, during the reporting period. So pag sinabi kong 2021, during the reporting period. Pag 2022, events after the reporting period. So nangyari yung sunog ng 2022, hindi naman ito tatamaan or maapektuhan yung mga balance ng 2021. For example, inventory. By the year, no, as of year end, period end. Andiyan pa naman yung mga inventories na yon. Yun nga lang after no, after 2021 nagkaroon ng sunog. We will have to disclose it sa ating notes, no? Announcing or commencing the implementation of a major restructuring. So nagkaroon ng mga ano no, restructuring. Nagkaroon ng mga changes. Okay, meron ng mga inimplement, inumpisahan. It has to be disclosed. Nangyari ito ng 2022, hindi ng 2021. Wala rin itong epekto sa ating mga balance. Ito, pang-anim, no? Major ordinary share transactions and potential ordinary share transactions which will affect your equity balances for 2022. Pero nung 2021, yung mga balance nun, yun pa rin yun. Walang pagbabago doon. Kasi yung transaction, mangyayari ng 2022. Pero kinakailangang i-disclose because the transactions ay major. Okay? So that's ano no, another example of non-adjusting events. Meron pa po tayo dito, dalawa pa. Abnormally large changes after the reporting date in assets, asset prices or foreign exchange rates. Nagkaroon ng mga ano no, abnormal. So ibig sabihin out of the usual. Mga outliers ano, yung mga changes na ito. Pero nangyari ito after the reporting date, after 2021. Okay? We have to disclose it. It will affect the balances for 2022 but not for 2021. And lastly, changes in tax rates or tax laws enacted or announced after the reporting period that have a significant effect on current and deferred tax assets and liabilities. So changes daw in tax rates or tax laws na enacted by 2022 na maapektuhan yung mga current and deferred tax assets and liabilities. For disclosure lamang po ito. If you will see class ano, uh, I think meron pa ba? Ah, hindi. Ito, ano, pang pito at pang walo. Tama ba? Yes, pang pito at pang walo. Entering into significant commitments. <laughs> hindi ito yung mga commitment na nasa isip natin, ano? Or contingent liabilities, for example, by issuing significant guarantees. 
So, eto ay mga ano no? Uh, especially pag sinasabi nating mga contingent liabilities, eto ay for disclosures lang talaga. Kasi in terms of the probability, the likelihood, hindi naman. No? Ang nire-record lang mang natin ay yung mga provisions and not contingencies. Oh, last item, pang sampo. Commence, uh, pang walo pala. No? Commencing major litigation arising solely out of events that occurred after the reporting period. May mga nangyari after the reporting period, nagkaroon ng mga kasuhan. Okay? Yung kaso na yan, nangyari after the reporting period. It will not affect any provisions, any estimates during the year because the transactions happened after the after the year. Okay? So kung makikita ninyo, ano, pag yung mga transactions may bearing sa mga balance, maapektuhan yung mga balance natin during the year, during the reporting period. So those are adjusting events. Pero kung wala naman po itong epekto sa ating mga balance, it has to be disclosed lamang. Okay? So yun po ano, sana nakuha po ninyo yung konsepto. In, in a summary, ano, to summarize lang, balikan ko lang ito. So ito po ano, class yung ating pinag-usapan. Adjusting events after the reporting period at saka mga non-adjusting events that will require only disclosure. Okay? So if you have any questions, please let me know. Ano? And I am happy. I'd be more than willing to answer your queries. Hanggang dito muna tayo. Hanggang sa susunod nating pagkikita sa video lectures sa YouTube. Bye-bye! <laughs>